came, I saw, I came, I saw, I praise the Lord, then break the law, I take what's mine, then take some more, it rains, it pours, it rains, it pours, I came, I saw, I came, I saw, I praise the Lord, then break the law, I take What's mine, then take some more It rains, it pours, it rains, it pours Yeah, I sold the pack, the loose, the hard yes. I listen to X, I peep the bars yes. The snakes, the rats, the cats, the dogs The games, a trap, protect your heart yes. I waited in line, for time, refine The new design, it's time to shine To shine, to shine, to shine, to shine I hustle, I flex, the world so please believe, allow the grease These niggas, disease, don't speak, we squeeze I make the devil go weak, the knees You hate, you're lame, you're lost I came, I saw, I came, I saw I praise the Lord, then break the law I take what's mine, then take some more It rains, it pours, it rains, it pours Today we have my favorite sponsors by far. This portion of today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. They sent me two boxes, but let me explain. I ended up picking three frames, but I picked the wrong size. I was able to pick any three frames that I wanted. Of course, I had to go with the classic. I think this would be like a cheetah print. I absolutely love these. Get the side, let's get into the detail. I'm like, I'm um, like, um. It doesn't stop at that, y'all. And you get like this individual, almost like patent leather case. This was my second frame. These are so cute. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, I do remember getting these and the navy blue ones. I was wearing these a lot I love them. I cutting down the middleman glassesusa.com offers over 10,000 prescription based glasses They carry designer brands like Ray-Ban, Gucci for up to 70% off at retail prices free shipping free return 100% money back guarantee They provide you with virtual try on with a quiz to get your type of lenses instead of just getting you know A typical blue light film you can just wear your frames and they already have blue light filled into them I would love to see you guys in these frames if you guys are interested, be sure to click the link down below in the description. And users will also get 65% off their first pair of frames when they click the link. And thank you, GlassesUSA.com, for sponsoring today's portion of the video. Oh my gosh, I'm very nervous. Okay, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel, your girl Vinny Soleil. Who would have ever thought we'd be saying that again? I'm finally back with another video. I am extremely nervous for some odd reason like we're not really strangers here porn to me now it's been five months y'all i'm gonna spare you guys the extreme detail because we have stuff to talk about let me just introduce myself hi my name is Vinny soleil if you weren't familiar with my channel prior to watching this video to create content i still create content don't do that Vinny's. i create content here on youtube i've been mia for the past five months can't just be like let's not talk about it because What's tea, girl? It wouldn't be a generic Venice video if I wasn't doing my makeup somehow, some way. So let's just get into that. I got my lashes done yesterday. It's a fresh set, so they look a little bit bold. But y'all, I'm a lash girly now. I think a lot of my nerves just stems from the fact that I don't know the feedback I'm gonna get from this. This video may get two views, child. Like, I don't know. Five months? That's almost half a year. Like, I already know y'all not messing with me. But nonetheless, let's get into a life update, shall we? Let's start off back in, when was this? I don't even have receipts. December November this this dates back to August of last year a lot of people don't know about content creating if they're new to the industry it's a lot of work answering emails negotiation as far as brand deals tax information it's not always acknowledged but content creators know what's up so back in August I got pretty overwhelmed with the amount of emails I was receiving as far as sponsorships I just never had the time to fully put forth attention into that answering emails in itself is a full-time job I was plotting on getting a manager there was a specific person that reached out to me that was very adamant on working with me. I can't shed too much light onto this because she's already threatened to sue me. Um, <laughs> we're just gonna keep it light. Look, you can have it. But pretty much long story short, I found a manager and it wasn't all that I thought it was gonna be cracked up to be, especially because I feel like there could have been a lot more research that I could have done. I never inquired about other content creators experience with managers up until after the fact. However, a management team or company or just agent decides to go about managing their clients, it's completely up to them. Only just agree to what you wanna agree to. If you don't like how they do it, then you can go somewhere else. And that's pretty much what I did. After realizing that it wasn't for me, I consulted with her and I let her know that I felt like there was a lot of things that weren't consistent in the stuff that she was telling me when we first started working with each other. It was like she wasn't doing the things that she said she would do. I don't wanna say like a breach in agreement, but pretty much 
yeah you know i don't think any person would be willing to just lose a client but she was very vocal about how she felt nonetheless i decided to you know let's go our separate ways and i was only really with her for a few months I hadn't even really gotten established because i just had this gut feeling that i should not be doing this with her luckily she had a month to month type contract i would just have to put in a two weeks notice even though i didn't do that but had i been professional about the situation i would have and it messed up my whole timeline of events i had at least five to six sponsorships already established through her film any of those sponsorships because i didn't want her making any more money off me i felt like she wasn't being truthful about the way that the money was being distributed this was like sponsorships that i had lined up from like three months ahead of time centered around the sponsorship so that it wasn't like you know something inauthentic i had to drop all of that like i had no content for like the rest of that month i had no sponsors for the rest of that month but all money is not good money i lost thousands of dollars doing that but i would have rather do that than her make any more money off me this was around graduation time I was super overwhelmed and I didn't know the direction I wanted to take my channel I even know if I wanted to continue to do YouTube because I like and I'm gonna be honest like creator burnout it's real at some point you get into a routine with your channel that you don't even have like that creative outlet that you used to have um after that I said okay F this I'm gonna just do my own thing at this time I also established that I was not going to college obviously we're still you know in my mama's crib like I think I only said this like once on my channel that I was ever gonna go to college and that was out of character for me even that's the only thing I've ever been like sure of and I'm not the type to be like oh I don't like learning I don't like being told what to do because it's not the case at all like, I actually I've enjoyed a lot of my high school experience where I've had great teachers but I've also had my fair share of effed up teachers racist teachers teachers that don't care about your mental health so I can only imagine how that'd be amplified if I was to get a professor yeah this isn't like news news to me at least but this is probably news to y'all but this is something that like it took me a minute to come to terms with it just didn't work out it wasn't a sense of urgency for me because I did not want to really go so no manager and no college i hope you guys are following I told myself i was gonna give myself at least like a year to figure out what i wanted to do to explore different career paths experience the real world outside of youtube and i think i'm kind of comfortable now got my fair share of you know the outside world y'all got it but before this you know i didn't know anything that I wanted to do. This whole little like time span was when everything started happening. About two months in of me not posting, normal day to day would be me going to the gym, probably visiting downtown or meeting a friend. Like, I don't know, just doing random stuff. Like everything but posting. <laughs> I was just chilling like literally just one evening out of nowhere I woke up and I completely lost my voice you could not hear my voice I called my mom and my sister they were like go to the doctor go to a minute clinic see if you could get tested for COVID like it felt like I had strep almost but not really just wanted to be sure I didn't have COVID they tested me for strep I didn't have strep they tested for a fever I didn't have a fever and I think they tested for one other thing that I like didn't have pretty much tested negative for all of the tests I had gotten so sick y'all may be graphic but I had coughed up like phlegm but inside the phlegm would be like chunks of blood like I got really really sick mind you this whole time I have no idea what I have like but I'm like okay why am I literally dying after I went to the minute clinic I realized like okay this is something serious I would like wake up I would be get cold sweat I just kept kept coughing I had no energy I think I lost like 10 pounds and like a week because i had no appetite i kept throwing up so none of that was really related to COVID at that point and it wasn't until my mom because she's in the medical field she explained my symptoms to a friend of her and they had said that it pretty much all lined up with the rsv strand that was out there was like really really bad illness that was killing infants all over the world because the respiratory system wasn't strong enough to fight off the sickness a lot of babies were passing away so i look up rsv and i'm like checking off all the symptoms like I was like yeah I definitely had that my mom was taking care of me at this point yeah I remember like literally just breaking down because I felt so sick I hate being sick oh so, sitting in bed for me was really humbling to say the least then this happened a little bit before I got sick but it just like escalated over time so one night i actually i went out and i went skating i used to go skating all the time as a kid it was like four years since i last went skating so i was like kind of rusty so i'm skating whatever minding my business i pretty much bust my behind like i there's nothing else to say but i busted my from everywhere like, i had sprained my ankle and i fractured like my kneecap my kneecap was literally numb i couldn't feel the bottom half of my leg for like a, a good week if anything like, i couldn't feel the nerves in my knee and i never got it checked out i still haven't gone my ankle i had the lady look at it when i went to go get tested saying that they don't cover like x-rays and stuff like that but she could tell it was swollen I'm not one to get injured often even when i was in sports and stuff i rarely ever got injured i was not in the gym for like a good maybe three weeks like i hadn't gone to the gym in a minute and i'm 
remember being so pissed because that's all I wanted to do. I would stand up, I would feel the blood rush to my freaking ankle, and it would just be excruciating pain. So I pretty much had to thug that out. And slowly but surely, you know, I was able to get back into the gym. But fast forward after the sprain and the virus and everything, I got into three collisions within the last month. Three. Three car accidents within the last month. So one night, pretty much had went out, whatever. I was on my way back home. I rarely ever stop to get gas at night. Definitely not safe. But I've had my fair share of getting a little gas and then dipping off. Like, I'm not here to be chit chat with nobody at the gas station. This specific night, everything in me told me not to go to the gas station. I literally was 11 miles from home and I only had 7 miles in my tank. And I wasn't home yet. Stopped at the nearest gas station. There was like a bunch of men outside of the gas station. Off rip, I'm like, okay, we're gonna make this real quick. Lock the doors. I'll make eye contact. Like, y'all know the drill. A gas station is a gas station. When you pull up to drive, you pretty much have to line your car up with your gas nozzle so you can put the gas gas in. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just park mad close to the gas. I don't have to get too far out the car and it's gonna be quick. Like I know I can, you know, be in and out. So the way that the particular gas station was set up, like, there was a podium and then there were places where you could take out the gas and then put it in the car and go about your merry way. So I'm pulling in, podium's on my left side. I'm pulling in, I got really close to the nozzle as I was trying to. Mind you, I've had this car for five months. I literally just posted a car tour and everything. I, I've had this car for five months. I, <laughs> I pull into the, the thing, you know, I'm thinking I'm, you know, whipping my thing. She feel me, this is nothing but skill right here. You just hear shh, like it just scratched my whole side of my car. And I don't know why as I'm parking, like it's not registering. Heard the noise and everything, but it just didn't process yet. I get out the car and I didn't even think to look. Get my, you know, I'm getting ready to pay for the gas. Like I'm not paying any money. I open my tank and as soon as I look at my tank, I see nothing but white chipped paint all on the side of my car. And I'm like, great bro. The men are looking at me. I'm looking at the car. Like, I'm trying to figure out who did that. Cause I I don't, I don't remember doing that. I pretty much just looked at the car. I took a picture and I sent it to my mom. And I was like, you know, look at my car. And I just, I didn't even have nothing to say. Y'all, this isn't, this isn't just the end of it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to pay for this. What am I gonna tell the insurance company? The pole hit me. Like, babe. Second incident, I'm very routine based. I like to have habitual tasks that are instilled within my routine. I thrive off of routine. Every time I go to the gym, I take the same route. Same lane switches, I do them at the exact moment. Like, I'm very particular. This plays into the story. I remember I had a late workout. I don't usually work out late, but this day was like around six o'clock. It was daylight savings, so as soon as six o'clock hit there's no more sunlight two minutes from the gym i was just stuck at a light that is always a long light before you turn into the parking lot so i'm at the light and i'm the first car on the right lane and on the left of me is white like band vehicle pretty much we're the first people on on either side of our lane i had looked inside their car and i had noticed you know they were kind of occupied there was a family in the car so as soon as the light hit i go ahead and i always you know see if people be late and they hadn't even pulled off yet this is the road i'm in this lane they're in this lane we're at the light i already had went he's still you know in his la la land this is pretty much where my gym is i only have to make a right turn and i'm right inside the parking lot as any educated driver in the state of georgia if you're gonna make a right turn you need to get in the right lane i'm already in my lane there's no reason i need to go to any other lane but i'm driving <laughs> i just see his car slide into my lane and i swerve out we pretty much I'm blasting music because I blast music every time I go to the gym. Only way I can get hype. I don't take pre-workout anymore. So I guess they were trying to get in my lane, get in front of me, merge. I don't know if people don't be checking their blind spots, but you can't just rely on these little mirrors. Like you need to turn your head. So I hear like a bump stop my car. And the only reason why I knew I had gotten into an accident is because I saw the car ahead of me stop. I'm like, okay, he just hit me. Cause I didn't hit you. So I was so over it. Literally just chipped my car. Less than a week prior to this accident, I look outside my car, there's not anything on the side of my car he pretty much smushed my mirror that's on the side of your car i uh, know what i'm talking about i don't know the name of it he had smushed like my left mirror in because my car is a newer car it's adjustable so if you push the mirror in you can just push it back out had i not you know had that option he would have completely blown off the side of my mirror like he had little to no damage but still i'm like let me call 911 i don't know what y'all got going on also to add they didn't speak english so like he's like are you gonna call the police like getting annoyed with me calling the police i'm like yeah bro you just hit me hello they told me okay it's gonna be a couple minutes before we pull up got my registration ready i got my license ready I'm like i'm like i there's no way they're gonna try to say that this is my fault long story short the officer arrives to the scene he didn't rule anyone at fault so it was undetermined after this accident, I'd be having my little moments where I like to, you know, self-sabotage and just ruminating and perseverating over the little things. When any minor inconvenience happens, I act like a I can't 
breathe. You know, like after the accident, I'm like saying in jest and conversation, like to my sister and my mom, I'm like, yeah, my car is totaled. Like I can't be going places like my car. I just kept speaking negativity onto the car. <laughs> it's not even at the max worst that it could have gotten at this point. It's just a few couple chips and I'm crying. Mom was just like, stop saying that because your car is not totaled. Like, you better be careful what you say. Like, after the little minor two accidents that happened, pretty much chilling. Like I hadn't gone outside for a minute. I'm gonna leave the house was to go to the gym. But of course, you know, like I have to get my lashes done i have booked a lash appointment and i'm on the way to my lash appointment there's a highway next to my house that i have to take in order to get to my lash checks there's usually a lot of really really big semi trucks on the highway in the morning at this point it had just finished raining i'm driving behind the semi truck and i see a sheriff right next to me my county has the most police officers in the whole state of georgia you're not gonna take one turn without seeing a cop car somewhere this huge semi truck in front of me and he just keeps stopping and going like he just kept pressing on the brakes and then going every time i see a car doing that i just back up i don't want to get too close and then i rear end you so i'm like okay let me freaking get out this man's way stop for one final time and i literally had to slam my brakes as soon as i slam my brakes i put on my blinker and i signaled to get in front of the sheriff so i'm pretty much in two lanes my truck's in front of me and the sheriff's right here and I have to get in front of him. I put on my blinker and I waited for a minute on purpose because I knew like these police officers are looking for anything. Three seconds and then I switched lane. I'm like, okay, cool. We're driving. I don't see no lights in my rear view mirror. Nothing. Okay, cool. Like, you feel me? Like, I don't know why these officers are so far up there behind that they feel like they're so just entitled to authority that you can't even switch a lane in front of them. So sure enough, I make it not even like a light after I see his sign turn on my first time getting pulled over ever I've been driving for a year and a half I pull over and there's just nothing but semi trucks going past them he pulls me over he's like roll down all your windows and at first I'm like okay if he gives me a, a ticket for my tent I understand that I have a legal tent it's not uncommon in Atlanta you know some officers are chill about it some officers will be a butthole usually when you can't see inside a vehicle they want you to roll it down so that they can see whatever's in the vehicle I roll down all my windows and then he's like license and registration like um do you know why I'm pulling you over? The whole nine, literally so annoyed. I'm like, sir, I don't know. So, like I have an appointment, I have somewhere to be. And you know, I apologize for whatever. Like I already was like, I'm not, I don't want no smoke. He's like, oh yeah, we can make this quick. I have somewhere to be too. I'm like, okay, cool. Cause I have somewhere to be. Being late, that's something I take pride in. These artists are charging every time you're late. So I'm like, yeah, I have somewhere to be. Like, I don't know why you pulled me over. Texting my mom, I literally was so livid. I've been texting her and I'm crying. They're like, you know, stay calm. Don't argue back with him. They will arrest you, like pretty much. Like, so he comes back to the car and he's like, I'm writing you a ticket for, he said missing tail light and an improper lane switch. <sighs> So I'm like, sir, I'm like missing tail lights. What are you talking about? Like, I just got my car. What do you mean missing tail lights? I said, sir, how are they out if they're on right now? He said, take your foot off the brake. Take my foot off the brake. He goes behind my car and he sees that my tail lights are on. I was so pissed. Like, you pretty much wrote an illegal ticket. I'm like, you're gonna write me a ticket for having no tail lights when you just confirmed that I have tail lights? He said, oh, you can go to court and fight it. What? Like, mind you, I still don't know how much these tickets are. Like, they're just trying to meet their little quota for the day. Like, bro, I'm like, sir, I'm not even trying to be disrespectful. I don't have time for this. Like, we just got another ticket. I'll explain that later. This will pretty much have been my fourth ticket in one month. I swear to you guys, I know how to drive. These last months have been nothing but just chaos. I'm like, so can't you just crumble up the ticket? He's like, no, I can't do that. You can go to court and handle this. I'm like, okay, so why did you write me an improper lane switch again? Saw you get caught up behind that semi truck, switch lanes. I'm like, yeah, I signaled too, right? He said, yeah, but there wasn't enough space between me and the other car for you to make a lane switch. I said, sir, I signaled for a good three seconds before I got inside your lane. Like, if I would have been behind the semi truck, I would have gotten run off the road. He's like, yeah, next time, make sure you have good distance between the car before you switch lanes. Like, if I didn't have enough room, how did I get in the lane? Like, what are you talking about? I remember just blacking out on him because I'm like, bro, you're literally gonna give me an illegal ticket for something I just showed you that I have proof of. Like, I was so pissed. And I just started cussing out the, the officer. I strongly don't advise this. I had to reach my breaking point. Like, remember just being so over it. Like, I felt like it was just constant. Taking nothing but L's. Like, I missed my lash appointment. I already paid in full. Texting my lash check. Hey, like, girl, I promise, like, I was on my way here. I just got pulled over. I didn't even tell her, like, I just got two tickets within the span of two seconds. And I went straight back home. I was bawling. Like, I, I was so pissed. I literally remember shaking as I'm driving the wheel. Like, I was so 
pit. This was like probably the worst I had seen myself get in a minute. And I think I was just so fed up. Like I literally was just like cussing up a storm since I went in the car to when I got home. My mom was like, you know, make sure you take pictures. Cause he was also saying, he was like, you should have your headlights on right now. That was another thing that he had added into the police report that I didn't have my headlights on. There's literally hours in which you're supposed to have your headlights on throughout the day. If it's daylight, you don't. What do I need to see with the damn headlights? Like because it was raining, you should have your headlights on. What? Like what are you saying? Pretty much he wrote on the police report that it was raining and that I had no headlights and I had no taillights. And for an improper lane switch. My mom was like, make sure you take a picture of your car outside. Show them that you have taillights on right now. Because it's not like your taillights can just turn on and off out of thin air. If they don't work, they're not going to turn back on. So we see that it was not raining in the video. He was obviously lying. When I ended up looking up the tickets, he wrote me down for three tickets, two for the same reason. He wrote the same ticket twice. So on their database, I have three tickets. But in my hand, I only have two. And he had already had inconsistencies within his police report. So, you know, like the likelihood of me getting these tickets thrown out if I go to court is going to be pretty high. I'll accept the improper lane switch, but taillights were on and I don't need to have headlights on throughout the day. So I mentioned previously that I had gotten two other tickets. Um, I'm back again. I finished off the last of my story with my final accident. Some parts of the footage got like cut out and some parts completely didn't even have any audio. I was going into saying how I got another two tickets before getting my last two. Long story short, one I knew had gotten a ticket around the same time. Ended up getting two tickets. They were four minutes apart from each other. It wasn't a physical ticket. It was an electronic ticket. For some reason, my mom decided to like do a deep clean in our basket full of mail and she found the tickets. Had I not seen them, I probably would have been in jail right now or had a warrant out for my arrest, I wouldn't have paid them. Got me in 4K and all. I took a picture of my license plate, my car. I got like a speeding ticket for speeding in a school zone. I was doing like 35 and the speed limit was like 25 I think and then I guess they gave me another ticket I think I was like pushing 40 at that point and I, it was in 25 I didn't even know I was passing a school because I wasn't in an area of my town that I was familiar with. That was fully on me. I take full accountability. I already paid those tickets off. But yeah, so that's why I had mentioned, you know, me getting tickets before and why I was fed up with getting another set of two. Because those three tickets ended up totaling to about $400. A cool $700 in a month just on tickets alone. So back to the final and last story. I had an interview downtown. I was like 15 minutes away from home and I was driving on ID5. Everyone in Atlanta knows about ID5. I mean, it's the main highway to just get from and back pretty much anywhere longer than like an hour long travel you're probably gonna have to get on i-85 i'm not unfamiliar with driving on i-85 we were all moving at a pretty good pace and out of nowhere like all the cars just stopped moving like we all had to break i think there was like an accident up ahead or they were doing construction or something the car that was in front of me completely like came to a stop we all went from like 70 pushing 80 to completely zero within three seconds. Remember there being like this decked out black Mercedes, like it was like a high class Mercedes. It looked like it just got pulled off the lot. I remember thinking like, you know, you better not hit this cause that's gonna be a whole check. As we're all stopping, I'm like realizing I'm braking and I just see myself continuously getting closer to the car. But applying more pressure to the brake, felt my car skip. Literally just started skipping on the road. Kind of, you know, I made it in time. And as soon as I let go of the brake, I hear the biggest like boom, crashed hard into the back of my car. Pretty much I flew forward in front of the dashboard and my nails went flying. Like I broke like three nails. Y'all could already understand how it was feeling at this point. You know, my airbags hadn't busted or anything. So I didn't know it was like a really bad accident or what. And immediately after I collected myself, I got out the car and I took a picture of the accident. In the picture, the girl is just looking at me like a deer in headlights as if she did not just kill me. I'm realizing that we look pretty similar in age. And I actually ended up finding out that she was only a year older than me. Walking around her car and I take a picture of her plates and I'm like you know kind of talking to her she's not saying anything like she's not she said nothing to me I know Atlanta be having hit and runs but I'm like why aren't you talking it seemed like she was in shock almost I'm like okay whatever you're useless at this point I called 911 you know I had kept my composure up until the point in which I called my mom she was so mad like she started screaming she was like Benice I told you not to leave the house I told you I begged you to stay home this that and the third you don't listen all this stuff <laughs> my sister is like telling my mom like mom just calm down like we have to make sure she's okay like after pretty much everyone was calmed down so i'm telling them i'm like yeah i don't think she has insurance she was just acting very weird all time i didn't know that this girl didn't even live in the state of georgia her plates 
said Pennsylvania. I never caught it until after I was like looking at my police report. She got both of our statements. She's telling me where I could reach her and where I could file the police report. And I'm like, no, I'm not leaving until I have her information. Cause the officer's like, you know, I completely understand. I can't get her statement or like, you know, even drug test her. Just do the protocols that they have to do if I'm still at the scene. Pretty much like the whole left side of my car was completely smushed in. The wiring was fried off. The bottom of my bumper had slid off and it was like scraping the highway as I was driving. So she's like, we can either take this to a tow yard or you can have someone come pick you up. Usually most of the time you're gonna have to pay to get your car back. Off the nearest exit and I got to a gas station. She came to pick me up. We ended up coming to the agreement that I wasn't gonna leave my car at the gas station because I have too much valuables in my car for me to just be leaving it anywhere. And it's a brand new car. My car had already been scheduled to be in the shop for the previous incident of me chipping it. Which had to file another claim with my insurance and also file another like, claim with the auto body shop to get two repairs done. I ended up calling her personal phone. This is after I called her insurance company. He's like, yeah, she's not listed as a insured driver on this policy. I'm like, okay, so who is? I can't tell you that information. All I can tell you is that she's not on here so we are declining your claim so pretty much they're not paying for it so i call her her personal number and i'm like hey like do you remember hitting me a couple days ago speaking with your insurance like they're telling me that you're not even on your insurance she's like i used to be on it but i stopped paying the payment so my mom kicked me off oh that was never gonna like you were never gonna say anything like well it's my mom's car it's not even my car or she pays the payments and i'm like okay you were the one operating the vehicle you need to be insured i'm like okay so can i talk to your mom and she's like like, oh she's taking a nap girl like okay can you wake her up like what are we doing but she didn't put her mom on the phone her mom didn't want to talk. and i'm like okay now i have to call my insurance my insurance ended up suing her insurance how i was able to get a repair cost covered <laughs> so right now my car is still in the shop i miss my baby sage but we're gonna get her back you know i had high hopes about this whole situation up until last week and i just decided to stop by the shop and get something out my car and i'm talking to the guy you know like showing me that the wiring on the car was like completely fried off. It looked like someone had like a lighter to it. Like, yeah, you have a lot of your wiring that actually operates the vehicle. It's all damaged. It's probably going to get totaled. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> you know, I'm literally like, I'm like, please like do whatever you can to make sure I get my car. <laughs> Because my mom's like, you know, this could be good. Like, you can get a new car and pay off the rest of the car. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no. When I like something, I love it. Like, I love my car. Especially for it to be my first car. So, that's pretty much the life update. I really, really, if you guys stayed to the end, I love you. Because I knew that this was going to be a very chatty video. But I just had so much that I wanted to get off my chest. So, hopefully you guys can forgive me. Don't hate me too long. Okay, what's up, you guys? So, I'm editing this video right now. I just woke up like let's not steer too long but i realized that there was some stuff that were like minor stuff that was happening in between all of these inconveniences to name a few on top of all this my computer completely stopped working i had to buy a brand new macbook three thousand dollars out of pocket i was not planning on ever ever spending my phone shattered actually my knee my phone both shattered both knees were fractured um oh my neighbor's house caught on fire that was another thing i'm no longer vegan about that in a, a later video but that's just a quick update I'm so short i just was really really deficient in a lot of vitamins um one being the main one that i've always been deficient in my iron um so yeah my iron has pretty much reached the lows of the lows and i am just wanting to get as much nutrients as i can especially with lifting i am prioritizing protein over anything so i really did need to make the switch let's see what else child that's all i can remember off the top of my head but i do have some footage of me recently went on a cabin trip and i thought it was the cutest thing ever i didn't film too much but i got a little bit of the trip and i'm gonna insert that now love you guys
I just came back from downtown. Um, I took a quick little shower. Today was my first time ever going to hot yoga. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting. Of course, you know, it's hot yoga, but I didn't know how the extremes of hot was gonna be. Cause you know, we do have a lace to maintain. Lucky enough for me, it was only about like 85 degrees, maybe pushing. Oh, I also got my nails done, but two days after. What is up with my lash, bro? But yeah, literally two days after I got my nails done while i was cooking the nail lifted up so the whole nail bed is removed off my finger but i don't know why i thought keeping the nail on and then like bandaging it was gonna allow it to reattach i don't think that's a thing though i'm sure that's only like with reptiles i went to hot yoga and had booked one in a location that was like near buckhead but then i was like okay that was at 1 30 p.m i ended up leaving the house at like one o'clock realizing that i'm gonna be like okay 30 minutes late i didn't realize it was an hour long class so 30 minutes is pretty much half the class but, you know i went up i'm hoping like like they're not gonna make me come another time but they made me reschedule i didn't even have a yoga mat but i really liked it um i would have liked to get more like i would have liked it to be more challenging if y'all know like pilates and just yoga in general it takes a lot of core strength 
and that's one thing that I am lacking. I actually, like, there was a lot of older women in there. There was a few. I probably was the youngest one in there, but I was keeping up with all the girlies, and I was like, okay. They also told me to shout out their location, so if you guys are ever in the Atlanta area near the Battery, go check out Yoga 6. Yeah, it was very soothing. I definitely needed that. But anywho, I just wanted to shed light on some things. If you guys haven't noticed, I finally reached 100,000 subscribers. Got my plaque not too long after I reached it. And it's so pretty, but you know, it's gonna take some more plaques to get the collection going. Look at it, you guys. It's so cute. Originally, I filmed a clip for this video where I was finishing off my life update and while I was doing that life update, I wanted to make a cake to celebrate hitting 100K. I've hit 100K like months ago, okay? But I was not well enough to celebrate or even acknowledge it. But I kind of came to terms with myself and I was like, this year I want to start celebrating small goals. Like even if it's just the small milestones that I make, cause I am so quick to just have a goal and then move on and want to know what's the next goal I have to do. Like really sit with that accomplishment and like pat myself on the back for it. You know, I've been on this app for a minute. I'm not new to the game, but you know, it's just a matter of time and I'm so inconsistent. I probably could have been way down my, you know, YouTube career, but that's another thing that made me I'm like, okay. You know, you've been on this platform for a minute now, like 100K is nothing. But it's only until I realize I see so many other creators that are wanting to join the platform and they look at 100K like something so big, like that's such a big accomplishment. And I even did at one point. That's why I'm like, oh, let's rewind and not forget where we came from. Back then when I first started YouTube, like 100K was you popping to me. So, so I had bought the cake. I made the and long story short, it didn't really turn out that cute. I'll answer a picture. It was like 40 minutes worth of footage and none of it had audio like absolutely none so i'm like okay um and i'm like okay yeah this is like the perfect timing for me to do this again because i actually wanted it to be cute and got it delivered to my house and the instacart driver lied and said that he got the item when he didn't get the right item i just ended up getting an ice cream cake i used to get ice cream cakes every birthday so i just got an ice cream cake from dairy queen clear so that i can decorate it and make it custom to me in my little party that I'm having. Um, I bought some champagne, like y'all. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanna thank you guys so much. I already, you know, made a little post when I hit 100K on my spam page. But after that, I kinda just swept it under the rug. But yeah, I don't know why I just like got happy about it out of nowhere. Um, right now it's about to be nine o'clock. I just want a piece of ice cream cake. That's why I'm kind of doing it now. Yeah, so let's get into it, girl. You would think I did not ever go to the gym a day in my life. Cute. Cheers, guys. I'm getting nothing but foam. Come on. Oh my gosh, they keep relighting. 